In this packet tracer activity, Investigate Disaster Recovery, you will backup switch configuration files, replace a failed switch with a new switch, and then restore network operations by applying the backed up configuration from the failed switch to the new switch. The backup configuration files are saved to a Trivial File Transfer Protocol or TFTP server. You are required to restore the saved files from the TFTP server to get the replacement switch online with as little downtime as possible. This activity opens in the wiring closet for HQ. Although you can navigate out of the wiring closet, all tasks in this activity will occur inside the wiring closet. Switching to logical mode is disabled. Part 1. Review a switch configuration. In this part, you will review and document the current configuration of the MDF-1 switch in the HQ wiring closet. This information will be necessary for manually configuring a replacement switch and verifying a new switch is operating as expected. Step 1 is observe the contents of NVRAM. Click MDF-1, CLI tab, and then press Enter. Enter the Enable command, and then enter the dir nvram command. This shows the contents of nvram. Notice that the size of the startup config file is 2,838 bytes. We will use this number for verification later. Step 2 is document the VLANs and other important configuration information. Enter the show VLAN command. Note the VLANs 10, 20, 50, 75, 99, and 999. We will use this list of VLANs later for verification. Enter the show run command. Note that the IP address for VLAN 99 is 192.168.99.150 with the slash 24 subnet mask. Note that the default gateway is 192.168.99.1. Note the assignment of VLAN 75 to interface F0-1. And notice Gigabit Ethernet 0-1 is configured with native VLAN 99 and set to trunk. We will use this information later to manually configure the replacement switch. Part 2. Backup files to a TFTP server. In this part, you will copy the configuration files for the MDF switch to the TFTP server. You will then verify that the files are listed on the TFTP server. Step 1 is enable the TFTP service on the FTP server. In the wiring closet, on the right rack, click the FTP server desktop tab, command prompt. Enter the IP config command. Note that 192.168.75.2 is the address of the FTP server. This server also provides TFTP service. We need to activate it. Click Services tab, and then under Services, click TFTP. Enable the TFTP service. Step 2. Upload the VLAN.dat and startup config files to the TFTP server. Click MDF1. Ping the TFTP server to ensure we have connectivity. Enter the copy flash TFTP command and specify VLAN.dat as the source file name. Enter the IP address of the TFTP server. Enter mdf-1 underscore vlan.dat for the destination file name. The file is successfully copied to the TFTP server. Enter the copy startup config TFTP command to copy the configuration to the TFTP server. Enter the IP address for the TFTP server. Enter mdf hyphen one underscore startup hyphen config as its destination name. The startup configuration is successfully copied to the TFTP server. 
Step 3 is verify that the files are on the TFTP server. Click FTP server. Under the TFTP and services, verify that the two files are listed in the file section. If necessary, refresh the file list by clicking another service and then clicking the TFTP service again. And there they are. Part 3. Replace a failed switch. Assume the MDF1 switch has failed. This could be from a power surge, a corrupted chip, or some other environmental hazard or hardware failure. In this part, you will install a replacement switch and move the cable connections from the failed switch to the new switch. Step 1 is add a new switch to the network. On the table in the wiring closet, locate spare switch 1. Click and drag it to the rack below HQ WLC 1. Click spare switch 1 CLI tab and then press enter. Enter these commands to deactivate all the interfaces. Step 2 is move the cable connections from MDF1 switch to the new switch. On the toolbar, click zoom in several times until you can easily see the cable connections for both MDF1 and the new spare switch 1. Alternatively, you could right click on each switch and choose inspect front. However, you will need to do this each time you move a connection from MDF1 to spare switch 1. Let me show you what I mean. Now I would have to do it again. So instead, I zoom in on the switch on the rack so that I can see both switches without having to do inspect front. And make sure that I move the cable connections from the same port on MDF1 to the same port on spare switch 1. To verify cables are in the correct ports, right click spare switch 1 and choose inspect front. Float your mouse over each cable and wait for the information pop up and then make sure the cable connections map to the table in your instructions. I have that table here. FA0 slash 1 should be attached to the FTP server. FA0 slash 3 should be attached to the AAA radius server. FA0 slash 2 should be attached to the mail server. FA0 slash 15 should be attached to the net admin PC. FA0 slash 19 and FA0 slash 20 should both be attached to switch FL-1. FA0 slash 21 and FA0 slash 22 should both be attached to switch FL-2. And finally, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 should be attached to HQ Edge. If you're not sure whether you've connected everything correctly, click Check Results to see if everything is graded correct. Right-click the rack and choose Manage All Cables. On the top toolbar, click Zoom Reset. Uninstall MDF1 from the rack and place it on the table. Part 4. Restore Network Operations. In this part, you will manually configure the new switch so that it can access the TFTB server. You will then copy the configuration files from the TFTB server to the new switch and verify the switch is operating as expected. Step 1. Configure spare switch 1 to access the network. To access the TFTP server over the network, the spare switch will need network information configured manually. Enter this configuration into spare switch 1 to connect it to the network and prepare it for TFTP server access. Step 2 is test connectivity to the TFTP server. Enter ping 192.168.75.2 to verify spare switch 1 can access the TFTP server. Step 3 is download the vlan.dat and startup config files from the TFTP server. Enter the copy TFTP flash command. Specify the IP address of the TFTP server. 
The source file name is mdf1 underscore vlan.dat. The destination file name must be vlan.dat. Confirm you want to overwrite the current vlan.dat file. And the file is copied from the TFTP server. Enter the dir flash command to verify the vlan.dat file is in the directory. Enter the copy tftp startup hyphen config command. Specify the IP address of the tftp server. The source file name is mdf1 startup config. The destination file name must be startup hyphen config, so just hit enter. Enter the dir nvram command to verify the startup config file is now in nvram. Notice that the file size is 2,838 bytes, the same file size we saw earlier in part one. Step four is reload and verify the new switch now has the correct configuration. Enter the reload command. At the prompt, enter no, and then confirm reload. After the switch reloads, review the configuration. The host name is now mdf-1. Enter the show VLAN command. Verify that the VLANs you noted in part one are configured on the new switch. Enter the show IP interface brief command. And verify all of your connected physical ports are now all up. One final check is your completion rate should now be 100%. This concludes this activity, Investigate Disaster Recovery.